Hey everybody, welcome to the Deep Dive Show. My name is Mpomo Taurira. Our goal with this show is to bring you and I in proximity to the people and ideas that will show us that it is possible and it can be done and eventually help us achieve on our dreams and on our goals. Ladies and gentlemen, today we have a guest who has been featured on The Guardian, The Patriot Online, Business Weekly and Review, Woman to Woman BW. She has, she holds over 12 years experience in the banking industry. She is a financial blogger. She's an author of the book, Confidence to Earn. Without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, help me welcome this evening to the show, Kumo Now, Welcome to the show. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for having me. I yes. feel so honored. You yes. have all these things, huh? You did your research, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Yeah. I, I have to, I have to. And you have a very, very, you know, yeah, there's a lot to actually research on you. I couldn't even finish. I was, I was sad because okay. I couldn't finish everything I wanted to research on. Okay. But, but it's, so, it's so amazing to have you in the, in the stew. We call it the stew. Yeah. <laughs> in the stew today. Mm. Um, but briefly, just walk us through your journey um, in 60 seconds or less from varsity to this very moment. Okay, where do I start? Um, first of all, I like people to know me for my simplicity. I'm quite a simple girl coming from a very small village, Tsao. Um, Tsao is 145 kilometers from Mau on your way to Shakawe. So mm -hmm. my journey really, I came to Kaborunde because of university. Uh -huh. <laughs> Before then, like yeah. I said, Kaborunde was just a girl from the village. You, so only, had, you always had stories. I have, yeah, yeah, I always had stories. Yeah. Never having had that experience. So my journey really yeah, started then. I remember when I had to select a university degree, there was a lot of internal fightings that I had to do, mm. also external fightings. Yeah, yeah. Because my parents, I did well in my physics, your sciences and meds, and my parents thought that maybe medicine yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. was a career for me. I remember I applied to university. I was accepted for BS, BSc, BSc, yes, BSc science. Yes. And I had to change. I changed my parents. You know what? I'm going to do a money-related course. For me, it's either accounting or finance. And I remember then, I didn't know the distinction between finance and accounting, but I saw I gravitated towards finance because in a talker like the points it's yeah, and, I, yeah. it. and then I, I said, was about to say that. <laughs> and then I said, I'm doing this one. I yeah. don't know the, the difference between the two, but I'm doing this one. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's really my journey. Mm. And I, because it's something that I selected and because it was coming from the heart, I also did very well in mm. terms of my Jenny, you know, your degree, and I have, I've never really struggled, even in terms of getting a job. Did they give you your first my concern, choice? Your first choice when you picked them out, the degrees. Yes, that was my my, my oh, okay. first choice after I cancel that hey, one. Remember, cancel, okay. yes. Okay. So, um, graduating got two oh nine. I've I've never stayed home mm. literally because I remember when we graduated, we had banks coming to University of Botswana Business Faculty. Look what they're going to select, and then there was graduate programs all over. So mm. I worked for Stambik. Yeah, that's where I started my journey, really, right. as a graduate trainee. All right. And I've done different roles within Stambik. I remember I started in a department called Treasury, where I was responsible for selling um, foreign currency together with investment products for commercial or business customers, not yes. individuals. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you said 2009. Yeah. So I'm, 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 I'm running the meds. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that do your meds. That I'm means old. 12 years is, is, is what? Last year or this year? Or you're still in it? Last year. Last year? Yeah, last year. Okay, because clearly. I left the bank. My math is really yeah. failing me. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, All right, year. so you left the bank last year? December. December. Last year, December. Awesome, yes. awesome, awesome. Yeah. All yeah. right, so what about your financial journey? Where did that one come from? Like, where you were like, okay, now this is me dealing with money. And obviously, you, you, you have dealt with it all along. But where you kind of just started to wake up to dealing with your finances? Okay. For me, it was in 2008 when I went for attachment. Mm. I went for an interview called Fleming. Yeah, it was Fleming Asset Management. And when I went there, the gentleman who was interviewing me um, recommended this book, Rich Dad, Poor oh, Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. I read the book and I concluded, this is what I want to do. 
I want to be a financial educator and I want to invest in property. But yeah, and 2209 graduating, you start working, you kind of like forget about your dream. Then you focus on pushing, building yeah, the, the, yeah. the corporate career. Yeah. And I sort of like forgot about my dream until I got like in 2017 where it was like, Things were just not fulfilling. I would do mm. this and I wasn't fully fulfilled in my heart. And it led to me prematurely leaving my job because I just felt like I didn't want to be here. I felt like I was engaged. I wasn't myself. And then I left my job prematurely. I didn't plan. So I went through some financial difficulties. So you just decided I just tomorrow, decided like to leave you know, my job. Yes. You didn't even check the money or everything. No, no. No, wow. because I think the other thing that gave me confidence to leave my job was I've always been a believer in a side hustle. Yeah. Even go you be, I was known as a girl on a Nadira Madi. I used to holoha miriri, so weekend mm-hmm. was for holoha miriri, yeah. and I'll make money. And then I also saw, sold the Aparozabo me, where I'll go to Jobe, Yaho Stoker, and then I, we also operated Machoni Sanyana Honoko Yubi. So I was always this lady who is always trying to make money. Mm-hmm. So like I get like Beraka in banking, I didn't leave that. Yes, I left hairdressing because my job was demanding. Yes. that. But in terms of selling, I launched. Um, a maternity wear. It was called Pregilane. So I used to sell maternity clothing. I'll do your, your house visits because you go, you know you go there. When you go there, you're not going to sell one item. You yeah. sell five or four items. So yeah. that's what I used to do. So obviously that was something that I was building, but it wasn't enough for me to say, oh, no, I can leave my job and this will sustain me. But mm. I just left. Mm. I left. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> because after 12 years, mm-hmm. you're you probably earning a very good salary yeah. and benefits and whatever. Yeah. So uh, today, okay, what are, you, what, are you telling, what are you telling to the person right now who probably might be in the same situation you're in? They feel caged. They feel like, you know, they can't breathe. I can't do this anymore. It's tiring for me. How, what do you, how, do you, how do you walk them through the process to do it the way you wish you had done it? Okay. For me, it's first to deciding. You need to decide what you want in life because we have this thing of just doing haphazardly and then hoping that we'll get somewhere. If you want to get out, decide, this is what I want to do. Then once you have decided, you need to look at your income. If you are earning a certain income, that a certain portion of that income should go towards fueling or financing that dream. This is something that I wish I had done before I left my job. But remember, I left my job in 2017. 2017, 2018, I went through some horrible financial difficulties and that forced me to rejoin the corporate world. Mm. So 2019, when I rejoined, I did exactly what I'm saying right now, where a portion of my salary was dedicated towards creating financial security for me so I can buy back my time. I can say, hello, corporate. Thank you for giving me the salary. I'm going to pursue my dreams. And that's exactly what I have done. 30 months, that's what I gave myself. I rejoined May on the 6th of May, 2019. On the 30th of uh, December 2021, I left, having achieved my goals, mm. what I said I was going to do. Awesome. So it's, it's, it's just about having that clarity of what you want, having a plan, writing it down, and then executing on the plan. Beautiful. No one else is going to come and do it for you. Beautiful. You're going to have to do it for yourself. Yes. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Yeah. We're going to pause here for a break. We'll mm. be back with Kumo now. Okay. <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome back. We're here with Kuma Nawa and we're getting into rapid fire. Um, so question number one on rapid fire. If you were to be rich, to be rich, you probably are rich, but if you were to be richer, richer, and leave Khaburoni, oh, and never leave Khaburoni, or be relatively poor, but be able to travel the world, which one would you choose? If you were to be rich, you never leave the city, or you were to choose, you were to be relatively poor, but never leave, um, relatively poor, but travel the world. Which one would you choose? I'll choose the first one. To be rich and never leave. And never leave gaps. Yes. Because now, if I'm rich, anyway, rich is 
yeah. very subjective, right? True, true. I'm not going for riches. I'm going for wealth. Yeah. Because there's a difference, difference between being rich and being difference, wealthy. Yeah. So now I'm all about wealth building. But if I'm rich, I'm sure then I'll have a lot of money. Then I'll sit here in gaps and I'll do a lot of things for, mm. for, for the gaps community. I mean to give him back to Mother Earth. So for me is the reason why I'm working so hard to build wealth is I want to be able to create enough passive income streams so it can finance my desired lifestyle and also my desired lifestyle involves planting a lot of trees mm. i'm looking at a thousand trees every year so that's my aim that's where i want to get it so i'll sit here and plant a lot of trees mm. and i'll be fine because also i'm a kind of a person who who likes solitude i enjoy my own company so i can be in the house the whole day alone i'm fine with it because i enjoy being by myself do yeah do yeah Dope. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I wasn't even expecting that twist. I thought it was going to be a hard question. I thought no. you were going to be like, hey. you know. <laughs> anyway, yeah. um, the second question, which one can you live without? Mm. Internet or your phone? I can live without my phone, but internet, that's where I'm doing my business. Yeah. So, Yeah, I can live without my phone, but I cannot live right now without an internet. Internet is a basic that need. Is me right actually, there. it's that a basic me. need. Yeah. It's a basic need. Yeah. But the phone because even right now how I'm responding to my phone or how I'm using my phone is really driven by me. Yeah. So I set time to respond into emails, the mm. WhatsApp. I don't just even calls. I don't take any call. I take mm. them during my time. I can say no, this one I'm not taking. This one I mm. can even put it on don't disturb mode. Yeah. So it shows you that I can live without my phone. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Internet is very important. I'm always yeah. telling people like what I can go for the whole day. No, but internet. I, internet I need it. Yeah. All right. Number three. What is an unpopular truth that you believe in? Something that's very unpopular, but in your heart of hearts, you know it's true for you. Okay, the one thing that I believe in is I think women should be left to choose what they want to be. There is this thing that just because you are a woman, you have a certain biological makeup, then you are expected to have babies, to be married, but. That's not true. You need to choose. You need to be given the right to choose. And we need to stop this thing ya for haraba na me we ask them ona le ngwana ha ona ngwana. People should choose. Just because I'm a lady can I lay that thing I can be a children doesn't mean I want to be a children, right? Yeah. I feel I, I should be left to choose yeah. who I want to be. If I want I don't want to get married. Rna le this stereotype ya hore ha o le me when you reach a certain age you expected to get married. Who said I want to get married? For who? If I want it then I will do it. If I don't want it no one should judge me for that. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. That's fair. Yeah. That's fair. <laughs> <laughs> that's fair. That's my crazy mind anyway. Yeah. yeah. That's fair. That's fair. Mm. But I had I had people going mm. Yeah, the, they agree. In the audience I'm like, mm, I'm like yeah, for sure. We should be left to choose our own lives. Like, yeah. yeah. You really hit you you really hit somewhere where it's <laughs> itching, eh? Yeah. All right. Mm. If you were to spend a week weekend away mm. with a public figure celebrity or you know influencer or mobutsana who would it be mobutsana someone that's well known who you who would you spend it with oh my gosh who would I spend I've never thought of that I'll that's spend exactly a day with ATI ATI yes uh, yes I'll spend a day with ATI look at the blink blink yes 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 I, I, I love <laughs> Okay, I love his music. I think he's very authentic and I think he's yeah. misunderstood. No, mm. when people try to be true to who they are because how about follow the crowd. We we kind of like think to miss and but I yeah. think I like his reasoning, I like his thinking and I think there's a lot that I can learn from him. Yeah. It is like our Botswana's Kanye. Yeah. Would you think would you would you say so? Like it's like our Botswana's Kanye West. I, I don't want to describe him kimo 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 na a label. Mm. He is, mm-hmm. but not for me he's I feel I can learn a lot from him. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. yeah, I think I would agree. I would agree with that for sure. Mm-hmm. All right, the last question in your own opinion, what do you think um is your weakness as a person? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my weakness is sometimes I I I try to be a perfectionist, but I found that that is so so wrecking. 
no one is perfect really and i'm trying to let go of that thing of perfection because i think you could delay a lot of things you start doubting yourself and then you start procrastinating or about the perfect moment but by so doing you end up not doing quite a lot of things because you are waiting for the perfect moment so for me it's something that um it it, it could be a good trait but it's also it can be a weakness as well in my case it's a weakness because i feel it delayed me to do a lot of things so yeah trying to be a perfectionist no 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 i'm yeah. trying to work yeah i'm Progress. trying to just do away with that mm. no one is perfect mm. yeah no one said we should be perfect Beautiful. we just have to enjoy life mm. yeah definitely yeah. definitely i subscribe mm. to that thank you so much let's bring us to a wrap of rapid fire <laughs> All right, everybody, we're back here in the studio with Kumo now. If you've watched this episode up to this point, definitely drop a like and comment below on your biggest takeaway because I'm definitely sure there has to be something. And subscribe to the channel. Um, so I wanted us to come to, to this point. I think we actually touched a bit on it during the break. Um, I want you to, 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 dem to demystify this for people. Financial security and financial freedom. Uh, how will you define those? Demystified for us, and and just walk us through those. <laughs> I like your question <laughs> because I'm actually I was actually shooting content yesterday, just trying to do that. Mm. So financial free security and financial freedom, mm. both key stages of wealth building. Because mm. there are three stages to wealth building. The first stage is financial security. The second stage is financial freedom. The third stage is financial independence. So this is what financial freedom, financial security is. When you build financial security, you are your ultimate goal is to have enough passive income. It could be passive income, kind of portfolio income, enough to finance your most basic, 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 basic needs. Mm -hmm. Basic needs were looking at your food, your shelter, your transportation, your clothing, and even insurance. I say life mm -hmm. insurance if you have dependents, because yes. if you do have dependents, life insurance is a basic need. Definitely. So passive income we're looking at, we know passive income, yes. like passive income, the money that you get from your investments without mm -hmm. exerting any efforts yeah. after the initial work yeah. has been done. So or portfolio income, portfolio income being money or the income that you get from investment mm -hmm. in paper assets. Basically money that's got uh, tied to your time. Yes, so mm -hmm. financial security, first you need to define a figure. You need to look at your monthly living expenses, your basic needs. So once you know that figure, that's what you work towards achieving. That's financial security. Financial freedom now, we are moving it a step further, mm. a little bit higher. We are saying, okay, to achieve financial security, financial freedom, now we are looking at your current lifestyle. Remember financial security, we are talking basic living expenses, sort of yes. like survival. Yeah. And then financial freedom current lifestyle you are you want to build enough passive income kind of portfolio income to finance your monthly living expenses based on your current lifestyle and then the third stage is financial independence financial independence we are moving a step further again from financial freedom now we are looking at your desired because you can have a current lifestyle you can have a desired lifestyle mm -hmm. now you are building enough passive income kind of portfolio income to finance your desired lifestyle. You see that in my case, my financial security number is 16,000. So with 16,000 coming from my passive income, for me, my passive income is from my, my one rooms investments, mm. my property investment. If I reach the 16,000, then that is adequate to cover my most basic, basic, basic living expenses. My financial freedom number is 30,000. This is now me working towards replacing that salary, and again, and I have 30,000 because mm. my lifestyle revolved around that salary. Yes. So once I reach 30,000 out of from my rental stuff, my one rooms or my any other investment activities mm -hmm. then get the financially free i can sleep the whole day and not but do anything knowing hore my current lifestyle my current needs are taken care of mm. and then financial independence for me 
I'm looking at monthly income of over 100,000. Then I would know that I receive 100,000 from my one room, security, Achilles, such a way that didn't pay 100,000, or any other investments. Then get the financial independence because I'll be able to do whatever I want to do. So that is wealth. That is wealth building. Wealth building is not about having a million in your bank account. It's Working on that number, mm -hmm. working on the number, yeah, passive income, kind of portfolio income. That's beautiful, wealth. Beautiful. Yes. Yeah. Very well put. Now, there's a, there's a saying, not a saying, but a practice mm. in the, in the, in the, you know, personal finance community where they talk about having money to cover your expenses. It's kind of, it's, it's like an emergency fund. Emergency fund, fund yes. 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 Talk, talk to us about that. Emergency fund is part of your financial security mm -hmm. because if you are working on financial security, yes, you want to build the passive income, but you don't want or how nearly emergency. Everything's about to stop. I agree. Yes. You don't want your plans to be destabilized. This is why it's important for you to have that emergency fund so that how nearly the emergency, you don't default to what's they're very expensive. Mm -hmm. Because remember when emergency hits you it, you need to respond immediately because if you don't respond immediately yeah. the problem is going to balloon out of control yeah. so this is why it's essential for you to have that emergency fund it's something that i've shared now with my followers mm. and i've told them my emergency fund i'm looking at sixty thousand that i need to achieve this year because sixty thousand would be able to cover me at least for three months and something that i'm building it's not like we're going to build once off and then from there we'll be taking it a step further 120 emergency you see, I'm defining it for six at this months. stage. Hey, 120 now can cover me for six months. But when I started doing my emergency fund, because when I started my journey in terms of correcting my financial mistakes, I started with what I call a starter emergency fund, mm -hmm. where I gave myself three months to put aside 10,000. Once I've achieved this 10,000, now all my other plans can continue. Even if I have an emergency, I'll draw from the 10,000. Yeah, but right. my plans in terms of paying off my debts will not be destabilized. Mm. Mm. Beautiful. You have talked extensively yeah. also on your journey out of debt. Yes. Please take us through it. How did you get into it? How did you get out? We are struggling. <laughs> We yeah, <laughs> yeah, I know it's something that a lot of people we struggle with mm. because I think debt is everywhere, credit mm. is everywhere, it's sold to us mm. left, right, and center, and it's sold. We don't have the backing necessary education to know what you can use debt to advance your life. Yes. But for now, we find ourselves in a situation where we are using debt to build liabilities, we're Definitely. using debt the holidays, things there. Once you have spent, you're never going to be able to get the money. But when not the you've sold your future salary. Mm. Because remember, when you get debt, you are selling your future salary. Mm. And that thing is going to chain you to something, either chain you to a job that you don't like. So for me, my debt chaining started um, when was it? To 20. I started working at 2009, 2010, somewhere there, working in a bank. Credit is very expensive. It's very yeah. cheap because yeah, yeah it's yeah. one of the benefits of working in a bank. I remember I took my first personal loan. It was eighty thousand. Hey. It was a second-hand car. Someone was building, and then I bought the car. I drove that car for I think it was three months, and then I got involved in a car accident. Fortunately for me, I had insured the car, okay. so it was a write-off. But when insurance paid, instead of taking this. My dear, who settled the debt? I, I, I didn't do that. I took the money and chowed it like nobody's business. I cannot yeah. tell you what I did with the money. <laughs> yes, yes. That, that's how I got introduced to debt. And then I'm living in Kaburune. You are working for the bank, so how much were you paying? this debt on a monthly basis? It was around but one point something because I can make a part of the... Okay. Yeah, I'm working in a bank. It, gonna... it was a five-year debt. It's a okay. personal loan. Okay. So after the personal loan, I... I had this thing, I want to have my own place, I want to have a house. So I started looking for properties, I got a plot, and then I had a plan, I, you know, I'm going to do this strategy investment that is called house hacking. House hacking is whereby you will get a plot and then you will build maybe the duplex, identical structures, mm. you will occupy one structure and then you rent out the other structures. You do that because these other structures can cover the debt, right? Yes. That was my plan when I got this property. 
but the things changed. I got the plan, the, the plot in LA, a nice uh, two beds, go corner, there's ample space for me to do two more structures, the this one and that one. Mm. I, guess what? I don't know what happened. And then now I find myself, I want a big house. Hey. <laughs> so I went to Kahudira, the plans for a three bedroom house, what, what, I built the house. After building the house, um, I think it was about 900,000, somewhere there, the debt, LA, buying the property and then getting the building getting loan. The building. So when we did the valuation of the entire structure, it was around one point a million or so. Mm. Now I've got access to extra 100,000. What do I do? I need Monday. the money, right? I get, <laughs> I get the 100,000. So that's really how I found myself in debt. So now I've changed myself. I've sold my future salary and then my plans, back fire. I'm not feeling like I really want to work. I abandon everything, but the debt is there. So yeah. whatever, when I go out, whatever I'm getting from this, remember I told you about the pregnancy yes. label thing, it's not adequate to cover the debt. Whatever, I find myself in a deep hole. I cannot keep up with my debts. The bank is calling and you know how it happens. And I, it landed me in court, really. That's what changed my journey. Yeah. I couldn't keep up. I faced foreclosure. I remember for me, it really hit hard when... I got a call, Keloko Mau Elohore is from a property valuation company that are telling me, why is why why are you located in Tokyo? I'm like, who are you? Why do you want to go to my place? No, we've been instructed by the bank to go and do the valuation. That's when it hit that I'm losing this thing. Yeah. 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 That's I, I think pretty much everyone who's yeah, my LLU. You start with a credit card, personal loan, and then before you know it, you are going to get koloi. Before you know it, and then you are there. Mm. Mm. You awesome. find yourself there. Awesome, awesome, yeah. awesome. awesome. Mm. Let's just hold that thought. We're gonna pause here for a break. Yeah. We'll be back with Kuma now. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> Make everybody to the deep dive show we're here with Kumon Nawa. Definitely, definitely, if you've loved this episode, give it a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm and comment below on your biggest takeaway and consider subscribing to the channel. Um, we'll have all her links below. Um, Kumo, you we were talking about your journey into debt, and so we just at that point you had hit rock bottom. I want us to now continue from that point of you getting yourself out. What was the what are the steps you had to take one by one for you to say okay? Because you did make it out. Congratulations, yeah. by the way. <laughs> yeah, I did. Yes. Okay. So the first thing that I really okay, this is what happened. When twenty I think it was on the twenty fourth of February twenty nineteen, when I was in Lobasi High Court. When I stepped out of that court, that's when I it I decided to say, you know what? I'm going to change my situation because in there I was lucky enough to negotiate a settlement agreement that favored me, what mm -hmm. I had asked for from the bank and they couldn't agree, but they agreed. Mm -hmm. So that's when I realized, you know what, my problems, I think I need money. I had to be honest with myself. I need money to solve my money problems. Yes. And that's when I decided there and there and there that, you know what, I need to rejoin the corporate world. And I remember when I got out of there, I started making calls. I want a job. I want a job. I called everybody, the bank, I've worked for Stambik. No, 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 sorry. Okay, let me not mention. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't call them. I called FNB because yeah. I, I'd worked for FNB in 2013 briefly for seven months and left them okay. back to, 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 to Stambik. So I called them. I said, I need a job. Yes. And they said, okay, nothing at the moment, but keep on looking at the newspapers and our website. And then I just kept on checking. And a month later, there was a job. There was an opening for FNBR relationship management. I've done relationship management. Actually, they were looking for a senior relationship manager. I submitted my application and I went for an interview and I told them, I don't want a gaps. I don't want gaps anymore. I want to, I want Mau. I want a remote location somewhere, not Khabarone, because... Somewhere okay. you weren't known. Pardon? Or somewhere where you weren't known. No, Mau is home village. Okay. Yes. I just didn't want town, city okay. life. I wanted because something laid back. Yes. yes. And something laid back. So lucky for me, I was able to be absorbed again as a senior relationship manager and shipped to Mau to look after the tourism sector. So when I joined... I knew exactly why I'm joining the job. I wasn't going there to get a comfortable lifestyle. I wasn't going there to get expensive clothes or a car. 
I was going there to correct my financial mistakes. So May, on the 6th of May, I rejoined FNB. And then June, May, yeah, I remember May 36th, my salary for May, it's less full, right? Yeah, yeah. But I was able to because the arrears and what, what, because when you are going through financial difficulties, they lend you in court, you accumulate extra fees. All the fees that the attorneys, they become yours to pay. So you can imagine I've accumulated, I'm struggling with debt and then there's this legal fees and then my business is falling apart and then there's all, things were just all over the place. You call it everybody. So I started cleaning up, I got the first salary and then the first salary also, that's why I said 10% and they give me like a the the starter emergency fund yeah 10000 so uh, yeah may june july that's when i said you know what whatever i'm going through right now i know that i'm not alone so why not blog about my financial issues i've always always had an interest in personal finance and my job was more on the corporate side that's when money managers was birthed the 19th of july 2019, I started Money Manager's blog. Thank God for and I started it. blogging about my money. I set very clear intentions. First day, it was to, th first three months, do the starter emergency fund and then correct, correct, set the areas. And then from, yeah, from August, it was now debt payment. This is when I shared the journey where I did my debt snowball the strategy that I used to eliminate my debt, a big portion of my salary was going towards debt. I set myself to say, within 30 months, I want to eliminate all these other extra debts. I just want to remain with the house because at least the house, I can point to and I can find another strategy for dealing with the house. So that snowball, that's what I did. And I shared it more pagey. A lot of people related. And every month, this is me. This is the extra money that I have paid. And I completely changed a lot of things. I, my lifestyle, I downgraded my lifestyle, whereby you would have expected me for a maybe a three beds or a two beds house. No, I didn't do that. I decided to live in a bachelor pad. I had a project there, the bachelor pad. So I had one unit there. It was almost like 90% completed, but in the tile is another mm. silly. That's where I lived for 30 months mm. when I was correcting my journey. And it didn't bother me because I knew what oh, this is temporary. Yes. I changed my hairstyle because I used to spend a lot of money momuriri, where I was doing the weavy, I was doing the pexy, whenemo. You want a pexy, I get it. Yes. Quite an expensive <laughs> hairstyle. That's how I went for this hairstyle. I remember deciding Kiyako Saluni, my hairdresser, he's expecting me to dish out 500 for the pexy. And I'm saying, take this thing off. Everything. Right? And are you sure? And I'm like, very much sure. So now I'm moving from spending 500 momuriring in a month. I'm going for sp to spending 80 pula. That's 420 that I'm using towards debt. So that's mm. how I came out of debt. But as an as a, when I was getting closer to paying and off the debt. And that's now your trademark now. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. Now it's my trademark. And it's I'm loving trademark. it. Yeah. The fact that I can buy. Because mm. back then, I can't happen when you, you when the house has come through the difficulties, you worry about what people will say. I yeah. had this thing, can I get enough confidence? Get, hey, can I meet you? And then I'll think, oh, will I? Well, then I can write. But the, I, I said, you know what? To hell yeah. with it. Yeah. Hey, it's my own thing, right? Yeah. I'm going to embrace it. And then I started embracing it. And then I started saying, I'm going to live a simple life. That's me. And the money went towards paying off my debt. And everyone saw it, doing it. I was behind the scene. I'm doing it anonymously because I was sharing my personal finances. So obviously, I had to protect myself. I had to protect my income. I got obviously my employer on us and not gonna happy. Okay, yeah. this lady's disclosing her no mudwela So mm -hmm. this is why I was doing it behind the scene until uh -huh. I've achieved my goals or what I was. Yeah, my target. Yes, yes. So that's basically how I did it. Was, as I was getting was smart, yeah, though. as I was getting closer. To paying off the debt, I now had to say, once the debt is paid off, what's next? That's when I said, the next thing is financial security. And then it was like, financial security, but what exactly are you going to do? Because like I said, Nick, and I let the project there, the bachelor pads. Mm. I looked at the project and said, this is going to require me a lot of money to do. So I said, I need something 
Sangka sedirang kabona aku sesi simple sangka dirasa part of my salary ya ya kita dirasa di stages. That's how my one rooms came to be. I looked around Mama U. I looked at the structures that my one rooms. I found that you know there was a gap. My one room I think I felt like hukarwa la tele la yub. Have a one room, kaina ceiling, kaina tile. The walls are dirty. Hong had ya paint you. I said, you know what? That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do nice one rooms. Then mm. or how then you want to live there? Yes. And then I I, I did that exactly. Mm. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful. Mm. And you you cued in exactly what I wanted to talk about. <laughs> My one room. Yeah. As an investment. Mm. Talk to us about it. Yeah. As an investment, how to do it, what it takes. A lot of people talk about the multi res or these. But you chose one rooms. Yeah. Yes. So for me, it was about investing. Because when you start your investment journey, you need to know why you are doing it. Mm. What are you hoping to achieve? Yes. That's the first question. So for me, my one rooms, I was hoping to achieve financial security. And remember, I have defined financial security as monthly income, aka target delay. Mm. I had said for sixteen thousand is something that I was looking at. And when I looked at my one room compared to the bachelor pads, I realized that a block of my one room, Ali three, was cheaper. Than bachelor pad, because bachelor pad I will spend maybe double or even hundred and fifty. But for a one room I was spending seventy five thousand. Elohor, I'm getting close to two thousand. Elohor, the same two thousand I will get from the bachelor pad. That's how I said. You know what? Maybe my one rooms would work for me. And then also in defining your financial security number, one of some key financial the rule of thumb. you need to acquaint yourself with so The first rule of thumb in when it comes to property investment, one let the one percent rule to income producing property, where we are saying that you need to build value in such a way that um, if you get if 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 the value of your property can give you one percent of income. On a monthly basis, then that prof- that investment is considered profitable. So, how you do the sixteen thousand? One percent of income of its of the value of the value. Yeah, yes. build the value in such a way that if we can get one percent of that value early income, then the property is considered profitable. So, when I did the one percent, try to work out or the sixteen thousand that I needed. Right, you divide it by one percent, you get one point six million. That's the value that I had to create. To 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 get to my financial security number, so and my one rooms was, for me right now I've created over a million value. Kama one rooms, so I, I, I'm getting there. So it was it was. So the what about the the, the, the the money to build it? Did you yes? Did you bore, did you go for financials no. or you saved up for no, it? No, I didn't save. Actually, I wasn't saving. So what I did is, like I said, I wanted something easy on a monthly basis. At this stage, so how can you dwell the debt? Seventeen thousand of my income when I got that thing. So when I finished that journey, I had seventeen thousand that I could start using to build my one room. Okay. So this is how I did the journey. Shared it more Facebook with my followers every month. And I guess that seventeen thousand or fifteen thousand kidira stage. I know for this month kidira foundation. Foundation na kaya hela. Next month kina another seventeen thousand. I move to the next stage. Next stage kasa hela. I move to the next stage. And I knew I did the calculations. Block obo ne bon ne bo cost. The seventy-five thousand. So seventy-five thousand divided by seventeen thousand. So you literally take like four months. I get somewhere there to to build a block. Mm. But how has that the block? Now I've got the seventeen thousand plus the money from the block. Now how how my dear investor Anna how could him? Because the thing is, the problem yah when I look after. Building or what's a made in a part of your lifestyle. Now for me, it was living as if, as if that money doesn't exist. I have seventeen thousand. Get say one point five on top while the finished block. Now it becomes what eighteen point five. So I wanted to go back. I think mm. you lost me a bit with the maths. Okay. Um. So the cost of a one room. Block. It's block. a block of three one rooms. Oh, block of three. Yes, That's it was seventy-five thousand. I was scared. Yes. I was like, <sighs> yeah, no, not just the one single. Is, a block of a, three okay. one rooms. It's yes. seventy-five. Seventy-five. Okay, yes. that means each is costing about twenty-five it's to make. Pretty much. Take. Yeah, somewhere. All right. Take. All right. Yes. All right. So yes. I mean, that means um, seventy-five. We divide it by seventeen. Yes. Probably you take about I don't know six, four months. Four, uh, I eight, think the first four, time in five. five months somewhere. Oh, yeah. Yes. Okay. But okay. remember how heads are. That money that you are getting from that block, you add it to the seven, seven, seventeen thousand. Then now it, it becomes then it's eighteen. Quicker. Yeah, now it, right. yes, you get right. closer to the journey. Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. And it's it's something that I think is 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 very, 
it's very viable, especially because a lot of people just want Baba Taboro Kuhela and Baba Taboro. they just, you know, the fancier things get, the harder it is for you to actually put someone inside as a tenant. Yeah. And let me tell you the trick about the target market Wama One Rooms. The target market Wama One Rooms is a nice market to deal with. You are dealing with your low income earners. You are dealing with people by Lahore. They work for the security companies. They work for your supermarkets. And you know your supermarkets, mm. they, they employ a, a lot of a people. Lot of people. Loom, yeah. So this thing, Yabo Vacancy, vacancy where your property is unoccupied for a period. I've never experienced it. I mm. always have a list of people wanting to occupy my property. And these people, they prioritize the basic needs. They're mm, not like mm. your middle, your middle income. True. Middle income, you want to buy color. They fancy, come up yeah. with excuses. Mm. But I've never experienced anything like that with my, my one rooms. Wow. It's a middle class. Hey. For them, it's, it's a basic it's need. Basic. I need to pay. I need to eat. And they will pay you. If you but the thing about them, they don't even worry about the dates. If they get paid, get it 23. A rental is due on the first of every month. They don't care. The 23, they pay you. Mm. You get what I mean? They don't care. By the middle class, they'll tell you, no, rental is one. Ah, I'm going to 20, right? Yeah. And then, do you want to have it as an excuse after an excuse? Mm. So I'm happy with my, my target beautiful. market. Beautiful. Mm. So I wanted to now get into something. Mm. What are your thoughts on, you've talked about this also on your channel. Yeah. Stocks, investing in the stock market, which I want us to kind of touch a bit, how to do that the right way and how, because a lot of people would like to get in the stock market. They probably don't know exactly how to do it and do, do it right. And also, I would like to know your thoughts on cryptocurrency. <laughs> oh, you're putting me on the spot. A lot of people, Bharata Kutzana, more stocks because they want to sound sophisticated and complicated. And I find that a lot of people stock, they don't understand stocks to begin with. Like I've said, and I've always repeat this, to every investment decision that you make, why are you doing it? What are you hoping to achieve? That's the first question that you need to ask yourself. So in stocks, you need to understand first, how do I make money investing in stocks? Mm. Dividends, I get it. Mm. And you need to understand that not every company is going to pay you a dividend. Yes. And then you need to understand the second way of making money is through what we call capital appreciation, where you bought at a low price, you're selling at a high price. Mm -hmm. People do not understand this thing. And also understanding that um, stocks are very risky. Yes. So this thing, the price, you need to be willing to be in there for a long period of time. Because when you invest in stocks, you are not buying a piece of paper. People think that when you invest in stocks, you are buying a piece of paper. No, you are buying into a business. If you get FNB stocks, you are buying FNB. So you owner. need to, you are an owner of FNB and you need to understand how that bank is making money. What is their competitive advantage? Why do you think FNB would be here in 10 years, 20 years to come? Because when you invest in stocks, you need to be thinking 10 years, 20 years. What makes you think it will be here? So you need to make those key decisions. It means you need to do your research. Understand the company that you're investing in. Understand how they make money. Tell them you need to be able to explain to a five-year-old company but then if you're going to take your money and invest it, you don't even know how they make money. You're throwing your money away. And I always tell people that um, stocks, uh, I always like to give an example, yeah, BTC, because I feel that BTC, when they listed, they did a very good job in terms of sensitizing the market, investing in shares, but they did a terrible job in terms of providing that education. People, but some may live out, I got the shares, the 1,000, and then that's it. How do you expect that to change your life? Never. It's not going to change your life. When you get into investing in shares, you, have to, you should have a target. Like I said, what do you want to achieve? And then you build towards that target. Are you looking to build value? Value is you're investing in company. In the future, it looks like it will grow and it will be there. It's a sustainable business. So it means that whatever you are buying at now, there's a high probability that the price that thing either will be a yeah, delay in the future, right? Or you are investing for dividends. So if you're investing for dividends, look at the track record of your company. Company we invest them on. I have they been paying dividends in the past? 
because that is even though it's not predictable but ho gonela gona le a bit of predictability a gore buttons ba duela hopefully but that's a ma ba duela but if you are just going to take your money blindly obwa tsenya then it's a problem and if you don't know how to read financial statements stay away from investing in stocks or go and give your money to professionals to invest on your behalf because how invest the most stocks like i said you become an owner you need to know how to read financials you need to know how to you need to be able to look at them and say oh last year they made this book and this year they made book and they bago di like this percentage once are going to get because you've invested in a business it's more like running your own business go go tsana la when you are going to take a lot of capital or both and you simul la business but you cannot even count the money obwaho hira just an accountant that go direla so when aka u clueless 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 then how do you become accountable for that business la accountant that that hora the business is losing money you believe everything or we are making money or the business is not making money you believe because you don't know how to read it you so our mm. solution to that is i know of you probably know of vanguard Yeah. Um where, yes. where you can invest in the top 500 companies yes. in the S&P 500 in index which mm. is fractional investing yeah. and then you own that means like you own if a piece of everything. You own a piece of all those things. Yeah. Do we have that over here or <laughs> what are the what are kind of like the 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 channels we can take? Yeah. Eh? Um unfortunately Mobusana can was still not yet uh a developed market was still a growing market so harana the index. So but I always say if you want to invest in stocks and for you for you to get started we've got fund managers by the horba offer the unit trust the unit trust there are some funds they let the investor more stocks so this funds that they create a pool and then they can buy many companies i get so when you are going to end up owning a little bit of everything because you invest in this pool and these are professional people by law they're hired to do this thing they read the financial statement so when they pick a company to invest in they know what they have done i get so that's how you build your knowledge but when you want to do individual stock picking once you are confident then you can start individual stock picking mm-hmm. yeah okay mm. okay i think before I ask my last question maybe you can touch on the second part yele a crypto <laughs> Like I've always said guys I always shy away to comment ka crypto because crypto yes is an alternative investment and it's it's a store of value kind of like but like any other investment in a little risk is i on a loan it's subjective to market fluctuations yes. like we've seen crypto It losing its value it, it's lost a lot crazy. of its value yes. and a lot of people right now hora go the value yabo ne ile kota se i can but it's if you are yeah if you are yeah if, if you look if if you know the fundamentals it's you know what buy, you're yeah. doing you can buy but you need to be willing to stay in there for a long time so that you can pick its value i can like i've always say if you want to invest in crypto it's a market or exist it's a legit market but know what you're doing don't just get your money wa khonela motho are no bile ka moso ke ke double say invest in your knowledge so that if you get into crypto you know exactly what you're doing Beautiful. and you know how it's going to help you to get to your goals mm. because it's all about getting to your goals it's all about, yes. getting, it's to all about goals. getting to your goals thank yeah. you so much thank you mm. much. my last question to you mm. is um how do you want to be remembered as kumonao <laughs> Oh this question okay I I want to remember I want to be remembered as a simple person who just tried to empower with financial education that's Change simply how I want to, yeah and that's your mind yeah mm. just simple person all I want is just to empower through financial education that's all Beautiful. yeah Beautiful. yeah well put simple simple ladies yeah. and gentlemen <laughs> this is kuma now you have just heard a story we've just dove into our world definitely um click on the links below it will be her her financial blog it will be her youtube channel everything will be below here make sure you dive into her world it will change your life and i just remember we didn't talk about your book she just launched a book last saturday confidence What is, what what is the title confidence, confidence to, to earn to earn yes. yes definitely go there check out her links everything will be below here without further ado ladies and gentlemen thank you for joining us this evening we'll meet same time same place next week be great yeah